Hey James at Barber Creek. Today we're putting a new barrel that just got freshly machined from our gunsmith, Pat. Um, I've already taken carburetor cleaner and blew it out and then run a couple patches through it and also through the chamber. I ran a bigger brush to make sure I get any fluid out of the chamber that was left over from me cleaning it. And Pat does that anyway. I just do it anyway. I, I like to make sure there's nothing in a chamber before I start. Again, brand new barrel. Old Zeus action. When I say old, it's an old school gun, 14,000 rounds plus, as you can see. Uh, I did clean up the bearing surface inside of here, which is just where the bolt lugs lock into. All right, so put a little bit of lube on here, which I did on the threads, and we're going to hand tighten this up and get it against the receiver face. So this video is really about barrel breaking, or what I like to call lack of barrel breaking. All right, so I got it right up against it. I'm gonna back it off and give it a quick snap. Make sure everything's tight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, this one's right at about 15 inch pounds. I'm gonna tighten up these Allen screws. Let me snug it up first on both sides. And these are just the side screws that hold in the actual barrel. And I like using these fix it sticks. So once I get it there, you can hear it go tick, 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 tick. And really that's about all you need. And again, Okay, so those are 15 inch pounds. Now, I'm gonna pull this off. I'm gonna grab my 65 inch pounds and I'm gonna put this back together. So, let me drop it in my stock. These are the old Artemis stocks, still work great. All right, and I know this is kind of hidden from you, so you stay, stay with me. All right, I'm gonna snug up both of the bolts until I get some friction. And again, this is a 65 inch pounds torque set on this fix it sticks and you can listen and hear it. Okay, there's the front. There's the back and double check it again. All right, so everybody oh, it slipped off. Operator timing and headspace. Now that we have these torqued down to 65 inch pounds, at this point, we are going to go ahead and shoot the gun. Uh, let me give you my thoughts on barrel breaking. We just don't do it. The reality is once we've got everything cleaned out of the barrel, we got everything torqued up, I'm just gonna shoot it. Uh, I know everybody's gonna say, oh my God, you don't break your guns in? No, we don't break them in. The reality is it's got a brand new lead the reamer cut the lead it's really sharp it'll take about 10 rounds to round that off and honestly it's going to take almost 200 rounds in general for this to truly stabilize because it's going to continually change velocities as we shoot rounds through it i always tell folks reality don't even bother doing a low data testing or anything on it till you get about 200 rounds through it and then you can really start doing your low data testing because the, the barrel is going to constantly keep changing until it hits a certain a certain amount of space or throat that burn back until it stabilizes. And in general, with Creedmoor, it's around 200 rounds. And then, of course, it'll change velocity over time, probably two or three times, just depends on how hot you shoot them. So, again, I'm going to show you that we don't break in our barrels, and they just shoot. So, stand by. I'm going to get set up on the actual bench. So, here we go. Stand by. All right. Let me get this gun set up for me. I'm going to adjust the rear ocular, make sure that the crosshairs are crisp. We will focus and adjust our parallax. Okay. There we go. All right. So let's see how close this one is on from the last gun or last barrel that was on it. All right. Let me find something to shoot at real quick. Level looks good. I'm going to shoot at the group on the far right just to give me an initial impact. Okay, so that is one, one and three quarter high and one and three quarter right. So let me take off the turret here and take off the windage. Okay, so I gotta bring it to the right and left as you were. One, two, three, four, good. And now I can't go down on this. What I'm gonna have to do is break this loose. 
Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and once I break this loose, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the zero stop once I get it set. So I'm gonna take my Allen set here. I'm going to break loose the zero stop. Okay, there's one screw there. These are actually pretty easy to do on these uh, Trijicon scopes. All right, so what I gotta do at this point, I'm just gonna put the turret cover back on it and I'm gonna dial it down. One, two, three, three quarter minute. Now the reality is these first probably five, 10 shots, maybe, uh, I'm rounding off that lead that's real sharp from the reamer. So it's gonna literally change my point of impact. Not too much, but in between shots. So let me shoot one more and see where we're at. Okay, just to the left. Now I'm not gonna to touch anything. I'm gonna shoot one more and see if we hit near the last shot. Okay, so I gotta come one, two, three. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a more precise aim point. So I'm gonna find some place to aim on that paper like I talked about in the last video. I'm gonna shoot a bullet hole, see where we're at. So I'm gonna aim in the middle. Okay, there's my new aim point. All right. Let me aim at that aim point. Check my level. Pretty much same bullet hole. Let's try it again. Uh, okay, getting a little heat from the suppressor. That one went low. Again, I'm used to that happening as you start getting these guns uh, initially shot in. Okay. You see how that point of impact changed? I told you that was going to happen. What's happens that that lead is rounding off. Okay, let me get another one. All right. This is me breaking in the gun. All right, so I can see now that I'm low from uh, the first couple shots. I'm gonna bring it to the right, one, two, and bring it up, one, two, three. Okay, well, let's continue on with our little process. All right, I do this every time with the brand new barrel, it's very common. Let's get a new aim point because somebody kind of messed up that one and shot it all over the place. All right, I see a bullet hole all by itself in the middle. I'm gonna shoot at it. It's just one o'clock of the one I was shooting at. You gotta wait between suppressor blurs. It's really hot right now. Okay, same bullet hole. And again, I'm about seven inches up and one o'clock from the area I was just shooting at. Try to get another one in there if I can shoot between the blurs. Really blurry right now, give me a second. And it's touching the same bullet hole. So as you can see, I mean, yeah, barrel breaking really didn't make a difference. All right, so let's go ahead and shoot it out further. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this in place. I'm gonna put the zero stop back on. And we're going to run it out at long range or longer range and see where we're at. So again, I'm going to put the zero stop all the way down. I'm going to snug up. I'm just going to do two screws out of the three right now because what's probably going to happen, I don't have that many rounds through so this. It's probably going to change again. Uh, once you get about 10 rounds through it, I'm going to start to see I might get a little bit of point of impact change. All right, so stand by. I'm going to get this set up. The zero stop is on. Put this on the zero mark. And I am going to go ahead and quickly 
do a velocity check on this and true the velocities. We'll start at about 700 yards, so stand by. All right, let me see what we got going on. First of all, let me check the wind with a blurry suppressor, heat suppressor, left to right wind. So I'm gonna plug in a two mile an hour wind uh, from nine o'clock. That's good enough for a start. Now this has got the old barrel in it, so the ballistics will be a little bit off. We're gonna go to 700 yards, just tell me to dial. 17 minutes. I'm gonna go 17 and a quarter because I know this barrel is gonna be slower initially starting off. Um, and again, we'll shoot a couple shots. It looks like the cleanest target out there at 700 is going to be target five. And rangefinder is telling me to hold a minute and a half left wind. So let's shoot it at a minute and a half. By the way, this is super blurry because of that suppressor is so hot right now. I'm gonna give it a minute and a half left. I will shoot between blurs, checking my level. Target four. Okay, you can kind of see I'm high right. I'm gonna shoot another one before I make any adjustments. Again, target four. And that one is about two inches above, so the last shot. So one, two, three. So it looks like this barrel may be faster than the last barrel, which is surprising, but it's what it is. Again, don't worry about the groups right now because, again, I am trying to shoot through a really blurry scope. All right, we're going again. I'm just trying to get the data correct first. Okay. Right underneath it, we'll shoot one more. I'm in that group below it. Check level, two minutes. So our data is pretty close. So right now I need the true the velocity. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Uh, and then we're gonna shoot it for accuracy at longer ranges. So stand by while I true the velocity. Uh, let me double check the suppressor. Make sure it didn't come loose. All right, I'm gonna shoot it for accuracy. We're gonna run out out to 800 yards real quick. And it's telling me 20 and 20.10. So I'm gonna go 20 minutes. Uh, it's saying for a three mile an hour wind to be two and a quarter on the wind. All right, so here we go. All right, let's find a target. Again, I'm shooting literally in a super hot suppressor so i'll do my best we'll go target number five check level again we're slowly adjusting our velocities like i said it's going to take 200 rounds for this gun to stabilize i'll do that in class actually we're going to use this gun in class this weekend coming up uh, bottom line it's going to change velocities in class it happens we just true it and we're up and running all right here we go let's go back on target and we're going to go about three minutes left when it looks like it picked up. Target five. Okay. Elevation looks good. Wind looks good. Let's get another one in there. Might be about an eighth of a minute low. Quarter minute low. I got to wait for the suppressor to clear. As soon as it does, we'll shoot. Still waiting. Okay. And it looks like it hit the same bullet hole at 800 yards. So we're a quarter minute low, so I'm gonna actually go in and I would adjust this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do it off camera, but I'm gonna slow it down about 10 feet per second through the velocities. Then we're gonna run it out to a thousand, so stand by. Okay, so uh, got it adjusted. Let me check the wind out there. Oh, this thing's blurry. All right, I got some golf balls hanging on a string at a thousand. I don't expect to hit it with this blur, but let's give it a try. So we're at 29 and three quarter minutes. And again, I will shoot between blurs. Middle golf ball. Okay, perfect elevation. I'm about a quarter minute off on my wind. Let's try one more. So I held a quarter minute too much wind, but still pretty good for a first shot at a golf ball with a brand new barrel. 
All right, let's cut this down to three minutes of wind. Waiting for the actual suppressor heat to clear. Really hard to see. And that one's about two inches off the golf ball. And I got one more shot. Looks like the accuracy is good. And no barrel break in, by the way. Okay, one more. Again, I'm waiting for the suppressor to clear. And it was right next to my first shot. So that entire group, if you look at it, it's all oh, about that big. So maybe three, three and a half inches, which is excellent because that's just a golf ball out there at a thousand yards. Hey, let me kind of say it one more time. We don't do barrel break in, all right? You can do that one and clean, five and clean, 10 and clean, clean and clean. I do this every day. Well, let me be clear. I do this five days a week, like for seven years straight here at Barber Creek and bottom line, we don't break anything then. So we shoot the guns, make sure they're clean initially, get that lead rounded off from that reamer that cut that sharp lead. It takes about five to 10 rounds. That's why you saw my point of impact move around uh, during our first initial three, five, seven shots. And then I'll true it at 750 yards because again, earth base effects can't be dialed out for the most part under 600 yards. So I start at seven and secondary effects. And then what I do is I run it right up to a thousand. I true the velocities again. As you can tell, this gun's ready for class. So guys, I know everybody and their mother talks about barrel breaking. You can talk to all the experts. And uh, as I always say, proof is in the pudding. The experts are who they are. I've been doing this forever and a day. I don't break anything. Hey, another downrange shooting tip from James at Barber Creek. Thanks for joining us. Howdy everybody, Keith Warren here for Barber Creek, America's premier long range hunting and shooting school. Barber Creek is one of America's top long range instructors and life-size animal targets out to a thousand yards. Enjoy a climate controlled classroom and shoot house, luxurious lodging and four course meals as you train with fellow outdoorsmen. Our level two master course puts you in real hunting positions off a tripod, bipod and backpacks with 25 life-size animal targets from 340 yards out to 1,670 yards on six stations. You'll become confident shooting at angles, reading wind and terrain, and shooting across valleys. When that once in a lifetime shot only comes once, you can't afford to miss. Contact Barber Creek at 334-845-0000.